It's been also upon the request of our international partners that we work with the uh, power there on the ground in Afghanistan to resume the operations in the airport so that the outbound flights as well as the inbound flights can just resume normal operations. As you can imagine, after uh, many experts have left the country and after the operators, and many of them have been foreigner uh, companies, basically, and, and experts have fled the country, uh, Taliban is left with very, very little expertise mm. to run the airport. That's one aspect of it. The other aspect is actually the actual infrastructure. It seems like many of the equipment is damaged or actually was taken. And, of course, there is a blame game there between the different uh, parties on the ground who has done, the, done this or that. Our role here, our technical team there, is basically to facilitate, work with the international partners, to resume the operations in the airport. And so, Minister, do you know at this stage whether Qatar would be providing security uh, and operating airport operation? And if so, for how long? Well, not security. And this remains a debated uh, topic. It mm. seems like uh, Taliban is insisting on the security aspect. Yet what they don't realize is security in an airport is very different from securing the uh, outer or the uh, surrounding uh, side of the airport. So they don't realize uh, things like biometrics and all the measures that any international airport has uh, to have in order to operate. So we're trying to negotiate this to explain the complexity of uh, the process. But the security is definitely an element that will not uh, be with us uh, in Qatar. And we're discussing this with Taliban and the international partners. Our part would be the technical assistance, as well as eventually helping with the aircrafts as well. Do you worry, I know you're talking about constructive engagement, the importance of constructive engagement with the Taliban at this stage, Minister, but do you worry, Do you first of all, do you trust the Taliban and their promises they're being made? And do you worry, frankly, that it could backfire? Well, we have our own worries and concerns, no question about that. This needs to be a trust-building process. We all agreed with our international partners that rushing into recognition is not necessarily the wisest decision to make now, mm. yet a constructive dialogue is extremely important. So it will be a trust-building uh, process. It's very important, Isa, that all of us collectively build and capitalize on the pragmatism that Taliban has shown so far. Taliban needs the international community. They realize this. They say this. And that's why we need to capitalize on this moment. Shutting them down completely is not going to be ex very helpful in this situation. Mm. That's why we need to think of other ways to engage with them without undermining human rights, without undermining women's rights, without undermining all the international standards that we all collectively embrace. And we think that there is a real opportunity here to rationalize their public actions. Now, changing their ideology might take years and decades if it's going to happen altogether. Yet, rationalizing their public actions should be our very clear and pragmatic aim. We don't care and we shouldn't care about their private actions within their own private spheres. What should matter is the public sphere. What should matter is their public actions. What should matter is the collective good and interest of the people of Afghanistan. At the end of the day, Issa, and I will conclude with this mm. point, at the end of the day, we should not be focusing only on the elitists in the Afghan society. We should be looking at the wider society, rural areas, other provinces. Those people will eventually suffer economically unless we jump in as the international community and help. And this unfortunately, cannot happen without engaging with mm. all parties on the ground. And we've been pushing for an inclusive government with the Taliban uh, in our past discussions and still until this very moment. We've been pushing for wo more women participation. We've been pushing for women education. At the end of the day, I mean, there are many Muslim countries who are engaging in discussions with them, including Qatar. And we have women education, uh, we have uh, women participating in mm. the workforce. More than 50 percent of our workforce are women. All of those points we try to push in our discussions 
with Taliban. Once again, I want to emphasize what matters is their public actions, and they showed a great deal of pragmatism that we, as the international community, should capitalize on.